So before starting, uh, please let me know uh, what is your uh, background on which uh, module are you working currently? Sure. So actually, I have very little knowledge about SAP. I'm a WMS expert, but I work with different tools. The most famous one is the J JDA, Old Red Prairie. So I'm an expert in Red Prairie, and now I just joined WC Bradley, as you know, and I'm also responsible for their SAP. And we will have projects coming along soon. So I want to to learn SAP. Uh, my main goal will be functional, uh, pretty much configuration and execution. So things like how do I create a receipt and how do I receive, then how do I configure put away, where do I configure uh, location rules, picking rules, and then how do I pick, how do I create outbound orders. And I'll be working mostly in the F4 HANA platform, so that would be ideal for me if you guys have it as for HANA. Okay. Okay, that's that's fine. Okay, that's very nice. So, how many uh, uh, have you did any implementations in uh, our rollouts in WM? No, I did rollouts in different WMSs, but not EWM. That's my first experience with EWM. I have what I know SAP. I know how to log in. I know how to access transactions, and that's about it. I did a lot of integration work with SAP ETC, but that's as far as it goes. Okay, fine. Fine. So I don't know any transaction by name. I in the AWM, I don't. I, I don't know nothing about the system. I know a lot about WMS in general, so you don't need to like what the process are. I'm pretty familiar with uh, configuration screens. Well, I know the AWM like the footprint, warehouse, the the zones, and and that stuff. I have a understanding of the concept, storage type, being, but yeah, I, I would like to learn more, of course. Yeah, that's true. So, no problem. So, basically, you know, AWM uh, not required. So, we, we have a basic uh, knowledge in MM. So, what is, what is MM matters management? So, how to create a vendor, how to create a purchase order, and how to take the goods receipts and um, how to transfer it so if uh, what is a slot that means a storage location so what is a purchase organization what is a purchasing group uh, if, if you have a fair idea on these uh, terminologies that is more than enough to work in your ewm system okay so ewm system yes it is somewhat related to your wm itself but uh, if you know the knowledge of uh, the storage type, storage bins, transfer orders, transfer requirements, it is an added advantage to you to understand the more concepts uh, conceptually, but not mm -hmm. required to know that knowledge. Okay. Anyway, we are. I am going to teach the from the basics only, so okay, you can understand more clearly on that. Sure, that would be good. And yeah, I would. I would not put much effort on the ECC part because you know on the MM part ECC because we have in my company other responsible for that you know SD MM PP all those areas. Um, my area is specifically warehouse management, so I I understand that everything is generated in the ECC. For example, the purchase orders, uh, delivery, sales orders, and so on and so forth. And that's fine. I don't. I don't really need any in-depth explanation about the ECC. All I'm concerned about is, of course, when it once is out of ECC and it hits EWM, how we go from there. Uh, yes. Of course, the integration, especially for S4 HANA, how does it? How does it transfer? I know the concept of S4 HANA is still pretty new for me. I know there is not a transfer is embedded, but how the handover happens between SAP and WM, that, that yes will be important. Okay, so going forward, so you want the, see we are, see, let us go for some AWM concepts and then we'll come to your 
uh, requirement okay whether it whether we'll go whether we go for the hana or normal convention system so let us see at the end okay so first let us understand it let me put some uh, you know the terminologies and uh, how it works how ewm is uh, uh, working uh, currently and uh, what are the deployment options and uh, what are the new functionalities available in ewm so let us walk through all those things and then we'll come back to the deployment options okay basically any warehouse if you take it if you take it any warehouse so basic functionalities of a warehouse is what is a warehouse basically the incoming of the products okay so incoming of the products that is whenever if you order a, if you, whenever you order a material to your vendor okay in turn vendor will send the components or products to your warehouse in your plants okay so what will happen is you will if it is not a wm you will keep somewhere in your plant right i am managed inventory managed so with this what will happen is the basic functionality of wm is incoming of the products incoming maintenance of the incoming materials and outgoing materials right so how do you keep the materials in your warehouse is important and how you deliver to the customer from the incoming from the warehouse is the second one important so okay both are the two important functionalities that are that you need to take care of your warehouse suppose if you are a warehouse manager of your warehouse person so primary your focus will be how you keep your products in your warehouse in what way you are keeping your products in and the the, the space utilization is more important how uh, importantly how how uh, optimization of the space so how utilization is done uh, on the uh, in the uh, on, uh, on perspective to the space space is very important space is nothing but it will it will no, it's a it's a capital, right? It's a capital. So inventory space, space, warehouse space is very expensive. So so you do, you don't want to keep the inventory for a longer period of time. Okay. So so, so there, there is the, the the warehouse plays all those important roles. Okay. So if it is not a, a W managed or EWM managed, so what will happen? Whenever you order the products from the market, you receive the product. So you will dump in somewhere in the storage location. So all the products will be stored in your at one place, right? So whether raw materials or consumables or the, or a semi finished product or something are consumed, whatever products you receive from whatever order you receive it, you will keep it in the S lock that is storage locations. But here, if you if you want to deliver that products to your production production, so what will happen our customer? So it is taking a lot of time and uh, the you don't know where you are keeping that raw materials or finished products or same stock. So because one place you will go on because the address is not known to the products, right? The address is not known. So in that way, so it will take a lot of time to deliver to the customer also. So so if you uh, if it is an IM managed, the physical address of the storage location of the product is not known, it will be taking a lot of time and moreover, he, more time consuming process is there to deliver to the customer also like suppose so if, if the s lock is managed with the storage look if the s lock is managed with the im uh, wm managed or ewm managed so the physical address of the product is known known so so what will happen with that if the physical address is known the picker or the person will go directly to that uh, that bin or that storage type he will pick the product very easily and he will deliver to the customer because the address is known okay what will happen here is the s log will be divided will be s log will be divided into you know the storage types storage sections and storage bins that means uh, whenever you go to the any pharmaceutical any uh, shop or place pharmaceutical you know the stores what will happen is they you will find out the uh, rows columns uh, storage types right a big uh, uh, rack will be there and in that rack the sections will be divided and in that sections some boxes will be keeping so what will happen in that boxes the medicines will be there so what will happen whenever you go and uh, want to some medicine so he will directly go to that uh, uh, box and a storage type and he will remove it and he will give to the medicine so why he is so much uh, you know the delivery is very faster why because the, he knows that where the product is kept so in that way ewm you know he has uh, has 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 their own functionalities okay in delivering to the customer fastly and storing and maintenance of the products is also uh, faster in your ewm system okay so main process in inbound process involves storage of goods in warehouses and their location and outbound process involves picking up of the 
in goods. Whenever a material is stored in a warehouse, it is stored in the storage bin and you can find out its current location. So basically, inbound and outbound process are very important in your any, any warehouses. So are you following uh, Henry? Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you have any issues or any questions, please raise it. Okay, so you know, the, as I said that WM is opposite to the inventory management. Okay, inventory management tells the count of goods in the storage location and its physical location is unknown. So warehouse management mm -hmm. deals with goods movement and monitoring the physical location of the goods recorded with the specific document. So as I said that inventory management will tell us only the count of the goods, but it the physical address of the goods no it won't tell you the physical address the physical address of the goods can be known whenever if your slog is managed with your wm with the specific documents and all of yeah and so this will be your uh, i'll take up this slide this will be your warehouse structure this will be your you know simple warehouse structure so uh, any warehouses will have the incoming inbound doors, right? So inbound doors means some doors will be assigned to here. So one, two, three, four, five doors will be there. So the truck will be coming here. This is the truck and uh, uh, unload, unload of the products will be taking place at the inbound door here, somewhere here. Okay. So unloading takes place here. So what will happen after unloading? So you will take up, you will not go in, you will not take up this into your final storage bin right final storage bin right so what will happen there is an interim storage area that is what called as a, a staging area you'll always keep the products here because uh, if you want to put some uh, you know the product if you want to pack it or if you want to unpack it uh, the, then you are you are performing here okay then uh, once you've done that then you will keep your products in this storage section or bins so this is about the inbound process. Suppose if you want to do any of the packing, unpacking or uh, you know the value added services for the products. So deconsolidation station is there here, the work center, it is one type of work center. Uh, you will keep, after uh, uh, the staging area, you will bring that, uh, that products into the work center here and from the work center you are moving into the storage bins. So, okay. So in the, that, that is about the inbound process. So in the similar way, the outbound uh, structure, how it looks is uh, whenever the sales order is there for the customer or outbound delivery is there for the outbound delivery is there. So then what will happen is you are removing the products from the bins and if the packing work center is there, you are placing, placing that uh, uh, product in the pack work center and then you are moving that pack work center to your staging area outbound. Then the, you will do the GI. So in the similar way, the doors will be there. The outbound doors will be there. From the outbound doors, you are loading it to the truck. So this is very a simple example for your how you will carry out your inbound processes and the outbound processes. And perfect. That that's exactly what I want to know. And what I mean by that is the concept is is good. I would. Sorry if I I just want to jump a little. Just to give you a, a little of what I, what I don't know if you have that, but like you might have some replenishment in between or some production in there before shipping, right? Yes, yes. So I will take up the course content, uh, then you can discuss on that. Okay. All right. Then there. So this is the this is the you know whatever the figure I am showing you. This is the common uh, uh, common one where you are executing all the processes here. This is a warehouse where uh, it contains, you know, doors are there, staging area is there, uh, deconsolidation or something, value added services work center will carry out and you'll put the quality inspection will be there. Then you'll go to the storage sections. And then uh, final, final, then packing will be done, uh, PGI will be done for your outbound process. So now, what are the deployment options that are available in your uh, EWM system, okay? So this is a ERP, multiple ERPs are connected to the SEM server, okay, here. And SEM server, or else uh, in that SEM server, uh, it, EWM is a part of that, or else you can connect with ERP, ERP into your EWM standalone system, okay. So figure shows EWM, SEM on SEM server or shows a standalone system. The following image shows the deployment options for 
SAP EWM. So there can be, you know, the deployment options are there. So, okay. So in here, coming to here, what I want to conclude here is, so if you are working with an EWM system, and there are two boxes. One is the ECC box. The other one is your EWM box. Okay. So the, 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 this figure, you can understand it. E ERP box and e SCM server box. E this is a, your EWM box. So e ECC and EWM. These two systems are connected with each other. Okay. These two systems are connected with each other. Okay. So the, how they are connected? Uh, that is the basis issue. The, there, are, there, are, there are some uh, logical systems are there internally. So they will connect uh, to the RFC connections. Okay. So these two systems should always transfer the data with uh, each other. So, so, so here coming to the and moreover the business system is ECC system, not EWM system. The business system is only ECC system because the financial transactions and the audit or the physical or whatever the you know the statutory compliances are there so it will happen only in your ECC stocks ECC only not your EWM system that's what I am telling you that ECC is your business system where you can execute all the transactions okay but EWM system is only a system where you how you manage the products okay in what way you are keeping the inventory in how much inventory you are keeping, what is the fast moving products, what is the slow moving products, what is the dead stock, how you are keeping the products, uh, that, that's all will happen in your SCM boxes. But uh, e e ECC box is a financial box, right? You need to understand that. Now, now in EWM, EWM works only with the deliveries, okay? So here, deliveries, that you need to know it, EWM only works with the deliveries inbound deliveries or outbound deliveries or posting changes deliveries now here so here if these two systems are connected with each other there is some new data flowing in between these two boxes right so what is the data that is flowing one is the master data that should flow the other one is a transactional data that should flow so what is the master data here okay customer master vendor master shipping points okay our our uh, plans right <laughs> So what will happen is these these all should be transferred into your EWM box. Okay, how it will transfer through this through through this core interface. Okay, core interface shipping. We'll do we'll call it as a shipping CFM one and CFM two. What will happen in this is uh, with this transaction uh, in ECC. If you execute the transaction in ECC, all the master data that you are you need to give the master data those master data will be transferred into your EWM box. Okay. And remember that master data is only a unidirectional. It is a only a unidirectional, not bidirectional. This you need to understand it. Unidirectional. And, okay. and ma master data is called as a product master in your SEM box. And the transactional data always is a bidirectional because we are working with only the goods issues and goods receipts and all the things will be done only in your EWM box, not in here. Yes, inbound delivery will be created in ECC system. That inbound delivery or outbound delivery will be distributed in EWM box. And when you do the whatever you want to do here, you do it. Okay, a GR, R, GR, you do it. And then the status will be sending back to your ECC system, right? So here it's a bi-directional flow will be there. Master data will have only unidirectional and uh, transactional data will have the bi-directional flow of data will be there in your system. So ECC is have two types of data. One is a master data, one is a transactional data. So how this transactional data flows here? Through so this queued remote function calls. So are using IDOCs. But in our sessions, we'll, we are going to work with only the queued remote function call methods. So this is how the transfer of data takes place. Yes, go ahead. So go ahead, understand. So then coming to this, you know, the uh, concepts which are there in your EWM system. So I will take up this once you, you know, once you join it, because if say now also then, uh, so always, you know, the yard management is there, which is a new feature in your EWM. So which is used for your tracking of the vehicles, okay. Uh, tracking of the incoming and outgoing vehicles okay and the deconsolidation is one of the important uh, feature when one of the important concepts in your 
AWM system that means it will handle with your uh, uh, the consolidation of handling unit so whenever you receive a big packet or big parcel from your vendor so you will uh, you will break that pallet uh, and you will uh, you will build the individual uh, HO so individual HO so individual HO so so the consolidation of handling units will be done in so the consolidation of handling units can be take place on which different products before putting them into the story location so all these things will be so there are new, there are new features value added services can be extensively used okay so there are uh, ehs materials will be handled activity labor management will be handled so all these things will be extensively used in your ewm system okay rf framework that is a mobile data entry that is rf guns can be extensively used so all these are our new features which are extensively used in your AWM system. So the, all those features and all those processes, I will take up this in the classes. So and uh, you okay. will be giving, you will be getting the two system as uh, system access okay, and uh, and uh, you in front of you itself, I will configure the of the configuration. I will show you the configuration and the execution of the scenario also. Uh, and the, that that process will be recorded and it will be shared to you on a daily basis or whenever required oh, you will fine. get videos you will get the videos so that you can watch it and you can execute the scenarios okay and coming to the course content okay these are the course content which i'm going to show you introduction and uh, system integration so how the systems are integrated with each other how the erp and ewm systems are integrated and how the delivery documents are integrated here okay delivery documents so documents should be integrated because there are two different there are various documents in ecc and various documents in your ewm system so how the documents are integrated with each other uh, i will show you organization structure in your ewm system and ecc system master data document types and our process starts from here inbound processing so this is your direct put away so how you keep the uh, how you whenever you receive the products how you keep in your uh, warehouse uh, bins so that is a direct put away and packing in your inbound how you are packing in your the products in your inbound storage and here in the uh, in the direct put away there are some strategies uh, what called as a fixed bin addition to the existing stock uh, next empty bin okay and uh, pallet storage, uh, bulk storages. So all these uh, strategies will be covered in your inbound processes. Okay. And coming to the complex processes here, the storage process. Okay. This is nothing but deconsolidation, value added services, quality inspection engines in EWM, and uh, expected goods receipt. So all these things will be covered. So handling units also will be coming from here onwards. Okay. Uh, is the story is, is nothing but it's a complex inbound process. So it's a POIC process, process oriented storage control process in that we are only working with the handling units and outbound processing. So similar way the direct removal and uh, stock uh, stock removal complex stock removal processes, uh, value added services, stock uh, removal strategies that is first in first out, last in first out and shelf life expiration date. So and after that the wave management and the staging area and it's in staging area. The, tra the way we are working with the transportation units, uh, whenever the truck arrives, how you load the deliveries, how, how you will unload the deliveries, how you will combine the deliveries. So uh, all these things will be seen in your staging area. Yard management. So in yard management, uh, we are working with the uh, vehicles. Okay. So when, uh, when mm -hmm. the vehicle will be arrived at the door and at what time it will be unloaded and what time it will be in your check-in and what time it will be there in your parking spaces so all these things will be covered in your yard management and warehouse process types this is very important in your ewm system because there is no movement type concepts in your ewm system there is only a warehouse process type uh, warehouse, warehouse process type uh, setup is there so with this warehouse process type, what will happen is entire process will be in entire process will drive in your EWM system. Okay, so you you have the standard processes. So we'll copy that, we'll modify that, and we'll are going to work. This will be uh, till your uh, final put away. The WPT warehouse process types are very important. That drives the entire process in your EWM system. And. Uh, warehouse order creation rules uh, how the warehouse order will be created on what basis the warehouse order will be created uh, whether the warehouse order will be created on weight basis volume basis or all the, how the warehouse tasks will be combined here 
I will explain all these things. So internal processing here, the posting changes, stock transfers, ad hoc moves, batch management, as well as uh, replenishment. Okay. Replenishment and batch management. Um, okay, and uh, physical inventory. Okay, physical physical inventory. So how you uh, how you match the book inventory and the physical inventory? So there are number of uh, uh, methods are there. How you will carry out the physical inventory? I will explain this. So mobile data entry in the, in the sense RF RF guns. So how so always you know the warehouse real time what will happen is the warehouse man warehouse worker will not carry the laptop and desktop. He will carry only the RF device, right? So how you configure the RF device? I'll explain here. And how you'll carry out the operations, whatever the way which you done in your uh, uh, laptop or desktop, uh, we are going to see in your RF uh, device. But gun is not there with me, but I will show you the configuration. Okay. So monitoring, warehouse monitor. Warehouse monitor is nothing but it's one type of uh, cockpit where you can see all the delivery documents okay you can see the materials you can see the stock and stocks and empty bins and outbound delivery docs inbound delivery docs handling unit documents whatever the documents that are there warehouse tasks warehouse orders so whatever documents that are there you may whatever the documents that you are working you can see in warehouse monitoring that is a very very important tool it's one type of cockpit you can say it. it's a collection okay so exception handling then exception handling in a sense uh, whenever you receive the material from the vendor okay so what will happen is you receive a suppose you see vendor says that I have shipped 100 pieces I have delivered 100 pieces yes you receive 100 pieces but uh, so out of you you say that I but some cases you you remove two pieces because of some damages or something so you will take it only stock 98 pieces out of 100 you are taking only 98 pieces so at that time what you are going to do you are take you are going to accept that type of scenario with the help of exception codes you need to put the exception codes and then you need to maintain the 98 pieces there in the task creations so so shortages and overages will be done through the exception handlings so here kitting process it's a one type of manufacturing process where you are executing the make to order and make to stock scenarios kit to stock and kit to order and cross docking cross docking in a sense you always uh, know that cross docking what will happen is uh, whenever they, 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 there is sometimes the fast moving products are there so it there is a requirement that you don't keep in your inventory in your warehouses uh, you can always ship that uh, uh, to your outgoing so what will happen is incoming vehicle incoming stock will be directly transferred to your outgoing vehicle rather than you can say incoming vehicle stock will be directly transferred to your outgoing vehicles you don't keep in your stock so with this what will happen is uh, the inventory uh, the space will be reduced inventory cost will be minimized manpower will be reduced and all these things will happen so cross docking is incoming vehicle and there will be an outgoing vehicle uh, parallelly ready the incoming vehicle you reach the uh, GR staging area and from that directly transfer to the stock will be directly transfer to your outgoing vehicle so that is what called the cross docking so the, uh, that then in the cross docking we will work with the EWM triggered opportunity cross docking and the last one is post processing framework in that post processing framework we will see how you are taking the printouts of your handling units how you are taking the printout of the warehouse orders okay and uh, how the output gets triggered so all these things will see in the system these are all the topics which i am going to cover and uh, i require minimum 40 to 45 hours to complete this entire course how many hours, how many hours? 40 to 45 hours 40 to 45 okay and i'm echoing i don't know if someone can hear me like i can hear myself speaking twice no, no, I can hear you. Uh, do you have uh, cycle you have count in there somewhere? Like stock taking cycle count? Yeah, yeah, stock cycle counting is comes in your physical inventory. Okay. Okay, just cycle counting. Sure. Uh, yeah, here it will come. Uh, physical inventory and cycle counting. Okay, that's good. And yeah, the topic seems pretty good for me so I just want to clarify a few things 
and if I don't know if it's time now or you if you have any anything else to present. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I like it. It's really what I'm intend to learn. And just to make sure the way we're gonna do is you're gonna present and then we're gonna configure everything from scratch, right? Together. Or is everything pre built? So like for example when we are when we're configuring the put away rules, are we configuring on the go during the training and then and then going through it? Or you will have an environment that is already configured and you're just showing and then we executing. So in the initial Excel I said that Okay, so I will not uh, pre-configure it. I will show you the configuration. Suppose an inbound delivery is there. Example I'm taking. Okay, in front of you or uh, in the class itself, I will configure what are all the pro what are all the steps required for that. Okay, and I will execute the process in front of you. I will configure it mm -hmm. and I will show it to you. So I will not configure and I'll come to you. So in front of you itself oh, okay. in the class. In the class itself, I will configure you. I'll, I'll show you the configuration also because uh, that is important, right? If I do it and come and show you the end user, the, that will be an end user training. Mm -hmm. Yep, just making sure. Yeah, that, 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 I will take care of that configuration. I will show you and that demos, that will be recorded actually and it will be shared to you. That, yeah, I, I got it. That, that's good. Very good. Still, any questions from your end? Uh, what what system, what version of EWM is this training happening on? Yeah, it's a 9.5 version. 9.5. It's the latest one. And it's not it's not on the S4 HANA, right? It's just uh, standard. No, no, it's, uh, you know, the HANA, in S4 HANA also, except, you know, the it is only in one box, HANA. Okay. Okay, EWM is embedded in only one box. So, only shipping and the uh, distribution is not happening, except that the process, right, the process, what I'm speaking about, the inbound process, uh, the outbound process, the complex processes are same, more or less it is same. Okay. Mm -hmm. Except I will and in that, between. And, that, and yeah. that's good. I I just don't know it, so that's why I I uh, sorry. I yeah. I don't mean like is as no, I no, said no, in earlier. I yeah. I my essay technology is is just some concept, so I don't know. Like I believe the EWM is the same whether it's done or not. It's just the interface that changes, right? Mm -hmm. The way the data is exchanged. Oh, is no, everything in one box in that for him? Mm, that's what I'm telling. It is in only embedded embedded EWM, okay? So it will be only one box. So uh, while going to the sessions, I will compare that uh, HANA also with the uh, is HANA box, okay? What will happen in the HANA okay. and the, what are the changes that are there in HANA and what we are doing. Because this is a, you know, this is a convention system. So you need to know these processes and then you can go for your uh, HANA, HANA box, okay? I'm mm -hmm. having the HANA, HANA system also. Oh, in the at one point of time and later point of time, I will show you the processes in HANA also how it works. That's no issues. Okay. Very good. Yeah, very good. Those are all my questions. Okay. So, so still any questions? So, uh, the systems, as I said, that systems will be given to you. So it's all depend upon you how you practice it. You know, you need to practice more on that. Okay. So, so what people are doing is just listening it and watching videos. Okay, that is not uh, enough. Okay, so you need to on daily basis you need to practice those uh, things. Otherwise, you know you will not have any. Uh, you will forget it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I agree. I, and that's why I and, like it that you guys have an environment I can access that will be very helpful. Yeah, yeah. And you you said that you are having either you are getting some projects in EWM, right? Yeah, I do have one environment up and running already that I can that I can practice on on my work, but they are 9.4, not 9.5. So, but uh, no the new projects that are coming along is 9.5. So that's the one I want to focus on. I the the 9.4 we have we're gonna replace after we put 
the 9.5 on the other warehouses. So that's going away sometime, and it's already running, so I, I don't really care that much. My, my goal is to learn the latest, so that, that's good. Yeah, that's no problem. 9.4 and 9.5, there is only a few differences are there. That is not an issue. You can still practice in 9.4 also. Okay, the the the, the subject and the uh, the configuration is more or less okay in 9.5, 9.4 also. So you can practice in 9.4 also. Okay, because you are having in the you are having in work you are having 9.4 so that you can configure the mm -hmm. warehouses and you can practice it. The process will be same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's what. So in EWM, you know, the the more you practice it, the more you will get it. The more you will understand it. So that's what. That's what. That, that is the only one I can say you. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. So, I just have questions related more to the training schedule itself. So, how often do you think we should we should meet to to run those forty five hours like? twice a week, once a week, what, what's your suggestion on this and so, how long the sessions will be? So the, uh, what I suggest will be, uh, we'll have on uh, weekdays, okay, uh, we'll have some weekdays probably at uh, uh, one and a half hour, uh, so five days, five days, Monday to Friday we'll take, uh, Monday to Friday in a sense uh, one hour or one and a half hour will take it so it will be going around five to six hours will come will take up uh, six hours per week okay so probably six hours or seven hours so that is more than enough to you can practice it on Saturday and Sundays okay, uh, okay. that make that, that makes sense okay so or if you're if you're comfortable on the weekdays so we'll start uh, on the weekdays okay yeah, as long as it's around this time, it's fine for me because, or I don't know how bad it's for you, but even maybe a little early, like 8.30 my time, which will be 6 your time, because then I, if we start at 8 and we do one hour, so then we can do one and a half hour, because that's will be so 8, 9.30. So probably 8 yeah. IST, what is your timing? 8, I, 8 AM IST, what will be your timing? Uh, my 8 PM is going to be no, no. your 6 AM. No, no, my my 8 AM is your 10, a, 10, a, 10 PM, huh? Yeah. Okay. That will be a little late for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let us see. Uh, let us see on the timing. That's not an issue. We can start at six thirty also, uh, IST. So for your eight eight or eight thirty. Okay, one hour we'll take yep. it daily. If, yeah, if we start the same time we start this meeting today, that would be good. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. We'll see that Ajay will uh, Ajay will update you the timings and all the things. But I am okay with this. Okay. Okay, that would be wonderful. Okay, so still if you and have any push, mm. go ahead. So it's going to be around six to seven weeks. If we put like 40 hours, it's 6.6 .6 weeks. So I'll say uh, 45 divided by 6. Yeah, like seven weeks. That's so a good time. You want uh, the faster or how, how you want? Because this is a normal pace which will go it, uh, which I go it. And uh, if you want, do you want me to complete in a month or what? what is your requirement? No, I don't have a requirement in time to be fair. I just, I just want to learn the most I can. Uh, oh. So you. I think because I already have the, not SAP knowledge, but I have other, I have WMS knowledge. So warehouse management is a warehouse management. It can only be so different. Uh, we, I think we can move fast. So I think one hour a day, Monday to Friday, that will be good. And if we can go faster, we'll, we'll go faster. And that's it. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't really matter to me. I will not be pushing like, oh, no, I, I, you said it's, it's 45 hours, but we're done with 30. That's fine for me. Yeah, I, I don't really care. As long as I have the knowledge, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, that's not an issue. So we'll we'll see uh, because you are knowing you are you are not in a hurry to go in right. So we'll go slowly only. 
that's not an issue. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I will be asking the questions as I see, and yeah, we can go. We can go slow. I'm pretty sure we will we'll do that. Okay. Pretty okay. fast. It should okay. be. It should be good. And it looks like you have a pretty good material, so that will help. Yeah, yeah. I will. I will share that materials also. PPT is also we're having. Okay. So recording. So you get lot of materials and lot of recordings to you. So you, you from it's your how you go it from there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That will work for me. The the question I have is when you guys send me the quote for this for the training for this for the content you just show me, if you can send it two numbers, one for one person and another one for two persons, because I have I might have someone that wants to do it also and the level of the other person is pretty much the same as mine. So of course it's is one more person I know I know that is harder for you when it's two persons because it's double the questions and different questions but if you can send me both prices for one which will be just myself or and for two and then I can I can because my brother he also would like to do it uh, but I will be paying for him if he's if you were to do it, so that's why I'm asking. So that's not an issue. The you will send the prizes. Uh, Ajay is there, uh, who is our project coordinator, our coordinator for this training. Okay, he will send you the quotations. Okay. All right, that would be wonderful. Yeah, I really, so, I really like the just one feed. I really like this agenda you put together with the course. That's exactly what I want to you know so yeah I, I okay. think it should work just fine so no problem don't worry I will take up to you you know in EWM I will I am having some real-time scenarios also I will put in between okay okay that, and, that uh, in, is and interview questions also okay interview questions also I'll pitch in it okay so don't worry on this uh, subject side whatever I know whatever I have learned from the past experiences I will share to you so I, I'm confident in that. And again, because I had zero knowledge in EWM, I think I would gain a lot. So I'm I'm yeah. happy. No problem, no problem. That will that definitely you from it depends upon you how you go it and how you practice it, how you read it, how you write that theory part. See, more or less practically, I will show you the theory side is from your end, right? So theory side also I will explain mm -hmm. you, but in a shorter way I will explain you. Uh, uh, as the time is very less. So what will happen is the theory part, I will share you the books. So you study that books. If I tell the storage type, I will explain you in a shorter way what the functionality of storage type. In depth, you, if you want to know, you, can, you have to read it more on those things. That's what I mean, I mean to say. Mm -hmm. and so from your end, you need to, you need to uh, read the theory part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let me let me see. I had one more question, but it just slipped my mind. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I remember. Uh, I don't know when we're planning. When you have availability to start, for me, would be ideal the week of July eighth, Monday, July eighth, because next week here is a holiday, Fourth of July. I don't know if you if you if you heard about, but. Fourth of July, pretty much we're off half of the week, and I'll be traveling, taking vacation. So, the ideal for me is gonna be uh, July eighth. So these two weeks you are busy, huh? July, not June. Sorry. No, 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 no. What I'm asking is today is only June twenty-five, right? Mm -hmm. So all these so days yeah, you are. Week? Uh, yeah, this week exactly. and next week. This week and next week, what is happening next week and this week? You're busy? So next week is the holiday, 4th of July. Oh, yeah, complete week, week is holiday. And I'm, and I'm off. I'm off. I'll be on vacation. I'll be traveling uh, okay. abroad. So I, I won't have access to, to anything. But the following week, which is the 8th of July, I'm available for like at least two months not traveling. So, so that will be the perfect time for me. 
So what we will do is uh, probably you can check with Ajay. Uh, tomorrow uh, we'll start the session then. Okay, 26, 27, 28, three days. If you want, I don't mind okay. waiting to the eight. It's up to you guys. If that's fine, okay. but yeah, that that will work for me also. So 26, 27, 28. Yeah, yeah. We'll start it and then you can take a break and then we'll continue from the July. That's my suggestion. Okay. That's my okay. that's, that's up to you. Yeah. We can do you think we can take the Yeah, as long as we do like chapter one and two in this week should be fine because that's just concept. And then we start on the yeah, that will work. Okay. okay. So uh, yeah, just we'll one check. thing if you can. Uh, send me that content. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I will send. Ajay will send that. Mm. And if you have, like, for example, by chap chapter, how many hours you see that would take? So I can I can see my agenda. Yeah, because there yeah, are no there are a few ones that. I... Uh, means I think that that way we can't segregate that hours. So why? Because um, sometimes based upon the discussions. Okay, it will take uh, the hours. Sometimes it will take two hours. The topic. Sometimes if, it will, if no questions and no discussions are there, mm -hmm. it will take one hour. So in that way, it will. Oh, yeah, go. I get it. That's so, fine. That's fine. If I, I understand, that's all right. I will share you the course content to Ajay. Is having the course content. He will share you that to you. Okay, if still, that will work if, for me. If still anything uh, in AWM, if you feel that. We want we want these topics. Uh, these topics, please let me know. I will go through that topic also. No issues. Okay. Okay. No, that's fine. I think what you have there is perfect for me. Very well okay. done. Okay. Okay. Then we can we will end the session now. Yes. Uh, for me, I'm I'm very comfortable. Thank you very much for your time. It was it was very good presentation. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks. Okay. So looking forward to you work with you, Anna. Okay. Same, same here. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Thanks.